supply in a tree in California, free in a tree out at Fall Creek, and both of them are connected right now on the radio. Basically, uh, I used to work for one of those environmental corporations, and I won't say which, but um, I quit because it was about money. And I started doing something like this called direct action because this isn't about money, it's about saving my planet. Part of what I'm doing is just to raise consciousness, just to, to show people that we live on a planet that is in danger, you know, and if we don't fix this danger, then we're also going to be in danger. When Jafford returned to Eugene, he still remained a well-liked and active community member. Some of the activities he was involved in included cooking for Food Not Bombs and teaching self-defense to women. I'd, I'd like to see people, communities have power over their own lives. I'd like to see people being able to make decisions about how it is that they want to live. Over time, Jeff became more and more frustrated by the lack of effect of symbolic protest. Feeling the need to instill a sense of urgency about the looming global environmental crisis being brought on by the commodification of the planet, he decided it was time to take direct action. In the early morning of June 16, 2000, Jeff attempted to strike at one key source of the problem. Around 1 o'clock in the morning, me and a friend left to the Romania car dealership. Um, we went in under cover of darkness. We made sure that there were no people around, that the buildings that were nearby were vacant. Um, and we started a fire that resulted in $40,000 worth of damage to three uh, trucks. Approximately half hour later, we were pulled over for having a headlight out in the city of Springfield. We were detained for about three hours, um, at which point, during the course of three hours, several other agencies started to arrive. Um, and we were questioned and arrested on criminal mischief. Um, a week later, I was arraigned on nine different felony counts, um, including arson, attempted arson, manufacture and possession of destructive devices or explosives. On May 27, 2000, three weeks before the Romania fire, devices similar to those found in the Romania fire were found on a tanker at Tyree Oil. A week after being arrested for Romania, Jeff was accused of also trying to start the Tyree fire and faced several more charges. Two attempted arson ones, um, attempted criminal mischief, manufacture and possession of destructive device. I think overall for all of those charges I got, um, five years. To this day, Jeff maintains his innocence about any involvement with Tyree. The evidence against him was flimsy at best. The fingerprint found on the device did not match Jeff or Craig, his Romania fire accomplice. The prosecution claimed the culprits cut through several strands of a chain link fence to approach the tanker. They claimed a pair of bolt cutters found in Jeff's belongings matched the cut marks on the fence. This theory ran counter to the lab report that stated the evidence as inconclusive. In a peculiar twist to the story, only the very top cut was found to be somewhat similar. According to the judge, that was the strongest piece of evidence against me. These charges added five years to the sentence. Jeff would have to wait a year in jail to hear the verdict. It was not going to be your typical trial. I would say that it was a circus. So many different events happened that it was very overwhelming at times. Um, I spent a year awaiting trial. I got arrested in June. The first trial was set for October. Um, we didn't receive discovery or evidence against me until two days before trial, um, which forced a postponement. Trial was then set for uh, November. A week before that trial was about to start, um, we got more discovery. Um, we were actually able to go ahead with that trial, um, at which point my, my attorney, Ken Morrow, passed away. On November 20th, just a few days into the trial, Jeff's lawyer, Ken Morrow, died suddenly of an apparent heart attack at his office desk. Morrow and Barnes, Craig's lawyer, had been working as a tight team, catching EPD officers and in many inconsistencies of testimony during cross-examination. Morrow's death was a major turning point. A mistrial was declared and a new trial was set for April. On November 22nd, just two days after Morrow's death, co-defendant Craig Marshall was offered a plea deal of five and a half years. 
He accepted this deal with Jeff's endorsement. I think that for him, it worked out. Um, we had an opportunity to discuss between us whether or not he should take it. I couldn't ask him not to take that, so I, I encouraged it. Jeff was offered a deal of 12 years by pleading guilty to both Romania and Tyree. In maintaining his innocence of the Tyree incident, Jeff turned the deal down. I was not going to take a deal for something that I don't believe I'm culpable of. Despite objections from the prosecution, Jeff was able to retain Craig's lawyer from the first trial to proceed with his next trial. My final trial date was set for April 4th. Um, a week before that, a person or a group of people went back to the Romania site and uh, torched approximately 30 to 35 vehicles um, that caused over a million dollars worth of damage. After the million dollar fire at Romania, a communique was released that mentioned Free and Critter and said that the fire was set in solidarity with them. A week before my trial, someone goes and causes a million dollars worth of damage in the same place I'm accused of burning and then says that they did it for me. I would imagine that had a negative effect. I think that the communique was inappropriate. I don't think that I should ever have been mentioned. I, th I think that it might have only enforced um, the prosecutor's belief that I was a leader. The state's response to the million dollar Romania fire was swift and decisive. As a result of refusing that offer and probably as a result of the second fire, um, two days before trial, I was re-indicted on 13 new charges. A new first degree arson charge with a mandatory minimum sentence of seven and a half years was added, as well as two conspiracy to commit arson charges. Jeff went into the trial with little hope. I remember a couple of weeks before trial, we're going, he's like, how do you feel about it? And I was like, I'm pretty confident I'll be found guilty of all charges. In the end, Jeff was found guilty for both Romania and Tyree on almost all charges. Jeff's trial then proceeded towards sentencing. At a sentencing hearing, Jeff read a statement. It cannot be said that I am unfeeling or uncaring. My heart is filled with love and compassion. I fight to protect life, all life, not to take it. It's not exaggeration to say that we're experiencing a period of extinction equal to that of the dinosaurs. 40,000 species go extinct each year, yet we continue to pollute and exploit our natural world. I will not ask this court to grant me leniency. All that I ask is that you believe the sincerity of my words and that you believe that my actions, whether or not you believe them to misgui be misguided, stem from the love I have in my heart. On June 11, 2001, Jeff Lures was sentenced to 22 years and 8 months with no chance of early release in the Oregon State Penitentiary. I know when the judge came back, my heart was definitely pounding, um, but uh, when I was all said and done, I wasn't shocked. He made the simple statement that he's never doubted the sincerity of my beliefs and that my politics will not enter into his decision-making process. Jeff was convicted of three counts of first-degree arson with enhancement to Measure 11 mandatory minimum sentencing guidelines. The enhancement is invoked in sentencing where there is the threat of serious physical harm or death. The night watchman testified that he never felt that he was in danger and the fire was subdued with a common fire extinguisher. In fact, all three vehicles were subsequently repaired and sold. The judge readily admitted that my actions were politically motivated. Uh, acknowledged that I had a superior intellect to most people, thus being able to rationalize my actions and understand the nature and consequences of them. Uh, he was then very adamant about informing me that my sentence would not reflect my political leanings, and then he proceeded to sentence me to 15 more years than uh, the manslaughter case that was just before me. Jeff's family, friends, and community were devastated by the length of his sentence.